How do you make traditional cultural heritage come alive and have relevance in today's world? How do Meilan Fang influence the European theater? Today, we learn about these topics and more in a conversation with Stathis Livethinos, artistic director of the National Theater of Greece, a man who always stands at the forefront of the global stage. In February, his bilingual play at Memnon will open to audiences in Beijing. The work, an extraordinary experiment from the National Theaters of China and Greece, will represent the merging of two great theatrical traditions. Then, when was the first time you came to China? Well, my first travel to China was about 12 years ago, I think, uh, on my way to Xi'an to see the Terracotta Army and Beijing, which I was a, 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 it's like a fairy tale for me, something very unique. And then I went to Tibet, which is a journey I'll never forget in my life. And then second journey was two years ago uh, to meet with the director of the National Theatre of China. And now is the third time and the longest one. Next February, you will introduce a classical Greek play, Agamemnon, to yes. China, and it will be bilingual. So, could you tell us why do you choose this play and uh, this yeah. form to present it? <laughs> it is bilingual because this is a part of an experiment we agreed two, year, two years ago with the director of the National Theatre of China, uh, that Mr. Wang Xiaoying, who did the Zhao, in Athens and me, we will do Agamemnon in Beijing. We will be followed by two actors so that there will be a kind of theatrical and, and artistic meeting of civilizations on stage. I think this is a very big risk, of course, but it's better to go with risk than to go with no, no with, you know, with safety. Um, and then Agamemnon is, is a kind of, you know, it's a part of, um, of something bigger that doesn't belong only to Greece. Agamemnon is a part, is a heritage of, I think, of a world civilization. It's the same like Bach, like Shakespeare, like Pinter, like Beckett, I don't know, like uh, Da Vinci. Th these, are, these are the reasons we exist. This is the reason that keeps us human still. So Agamemnon is a part of a trilogy. It's the first part of Orestea. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful piece of theater above all. So I thought that it would be interesting to see how the Chinese audience will follow the story of Agamemnon and how Aeschylus, the playwright, which, which is one of our three major classics, uh, Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, uh, how, how, what is their impact today on the Chinese audience? For me this is something very, very interesting and I'm very curious to know it. Bilingual, yes, because this is a part of our schedule to, to make something more interesting because I really believe that the National Theatre should always be in the avant-garde. To have a bilingual presentation of a play means that you hear two languages, two kinds of actors, two schools. So it's something very, <clears throat> something very, very, very important, at the same time very risky. I don't know. We will see. Yeah. Maybe something magical will happen. Maybe, Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, and um, I read that you would use some Tai Chi or Chinese martial art to train the actors, is that true? I used the martial arts uh, in, in Athens when I was preparing uh, four years ago the Iliad by Homer. Uh, we had a Shaolin monk uh, together with us because I wanted him to train the actors to know what is the battle uh, the, the, the nature of battle in art and to train, yeah. Uh, now here, no, no, we just have everyday training, of course, no martial arts. <laughs> so what do you want the audience to feel after watching your play? I would like one thing. 
for me, one thing is, is important in, in theater art, not to be boring. All the rest for me is possible. I want them to cry, I want them to laugh, even in Agamemnon. I want them to get amused, I want them to think, I want them to cry. I, I don't want them to, to be bored and, and, and sleep like that in the chair. It's the only thing I don't want. To get the audience really engaged in well, your play. Who doesn't like that? <laughs> I think so, I agree with you. And um, which Chinese play appeals to you the most? I was thrilled by Zhao. I thought that Zhao, the orphan of Zhao, which uh, Wang did in the National, was a great work and uh, it's a very interesting, epical uh, play and a very difficult one. The Chinese theatre of and many actors, especially Main Lan Fang in the beginning of the century, influenced uh, uh, the, the, the European theatre very much, especially Meyerhold at his uh, mm, relation to Meyerhold gave many important results in the world of the Russian classics and through them, through them as a big tree or as a big river to the theatre of whole Europe after that. Now, <clears throat> with this operation, this project here, the Agamemnon project and things like that, there is a, I would not la like to say big words, but you know, it's, this is a Chinese proverb, I think, that uh, a big journey starts from one step. Yes. yes? So this is one step. This is a very big journey. It will take generations for real understanding, which may not happen, but you never know. But this is also a first, a good first step. And for me, it will be a unique experience. I know that to keep the traditional cultural heritage alive and relevant is not always easy. And uh, your previous production, Homer's Iliad, proved to be a huge global success. So according to your experience, how to make a classical work appealing to the contemporary audience? The work of, th of theatre production uh, is, 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 is not a, mu a museum, it's not a an action in, of a museum is an action of now and here and today. So if something happens to the heritage is that um, you have to be very alive in what you do and try to somehow synchronize your thinking, Eschilos thinking, the problems of today, uh, the acting methods that ha have uh, appeared for all these years. The role of theater by itself in the society is more important because theater is not only to, to uh, somehow amuse people, it has to educate and of course theater must awaken the minds of the people because people live in a very difficult everyday condition and all the big questions stay in the sand, under. So theatre has to bring up all that and show us life as it is and as it should be. What's the role of theatric art in promoting mutual understanding between different cultures? Theatre by itself, it's a, a national uh, mm, signature because it speaks the language of, of, uh, of yourself, speak the language of the people. Language is a way of thinking. So it's very difficult for, for me also to understand people but not knowing the structure and the nature of the language. That means there is always something, a very big piece of understanding in the shadow. Of course, if theatre plays its role and it reflects some emotional and spiritual status of a country, this of course could help. To get to know each other means something deeper. And that's why I think classical plays 
for example, like Agamemnon, can work uh, uh, for this direction. It's very important to see how a classical play um, can include many different people together. Theatre culture is more incorporated into Greek people's life than Chinese people's. So to further develop this cultural sector, what do you think China can learn from Greece? In the contemporary uh, theatre education, I think we could exchange some experience, that's for sure. I mean, we have, we have now studios for education and seminars of education on ancient drama, on contemporary theatre in Athens. And uh, for me that would be a unique, if the young generation contact with Greek young generation, that would be interesting. We, um, we organize in Delphi, which is one of the most beautiful places in the world, uh, Delphi, the land of Apollo. There we have seminars and educational groups from all over the world studying the ancient drama. For example, that would be interesting. And, and, I, think, and I think that the Greeks would have too many things to learn from the Chinese way of thinking and of course from the Chinese opera. So last but not least, would you like to say something to the theatre lovers in China? Theatre lovers in China, I hope you will increase more and more because can you imagine one billion three hundred million theatre lovers in the world that would be a new record uh, I would love to meet them and see them in the theatre and I'm very honoured I'm very honoured to be here in your country